All right, we ready? Yeah. All right. Well, this is our first meeting, I think, since October. So thanks, everybody, for uh, coming tonight. I hope that uh, everybody had good holidays, a good New Year, all that good stuff. So, Monique, thanks for being here. I know that uh, you just got sworn in last night, and, and Matt as well. Thanks for being here. Uh, Monique's not a new member, but Matt is. So, um, Well, let's do... Uh, Roll call real quick. So why don't we just go around the room and introduce yourself. So Zahi, why don't we start with you? Sure. So um, hi, everybody. I'm uh, Zahi Ben David. Um, what should I say? Uh, maybe six What's or seven years now. On the, yeah, you've been on the CIC for a while. Yeah. I think Matt's our only new member, but yeah, that'd be good to just kind of um, introduce where you're from. And Yeah. Uh, so um, originally from Israel, been here now 14 years, um, 13 years or 13 and a half. Uh, I'm a, a finance and real estate professor at Ohio State at Fisher um, and live here in Mexico. All right. And Zahi is our current vice chair of the board. Yeah. Dave? So, yeah. Happy to, hear, to be here in person. Uh, Dave Paul. I've been on the CIC since the beginning. That is scary. Um, real estate attorney, born in Mexico, raised in Mexico, in Mexico, in Mexico. <laughs> Tom Brigden, I've been on the CIC since it's formed also. Uh, real estate developer, lived in Bexley for 22 years. And you're still here. And I'm still here. Sarah Gold, I've been on the CIC for two years now. It's crazy. Uh, also a real estate developer uh, and happy to be here. All right. And you're our secretary of the board. I am the secretary. All right. Uh, I'm Nate Green. I'm the uh, current chair of the board. I've lived in Bexley for 20 years, and I've been on the board since it's the inception, although I was off for, for one year. But it's uh, it's great to be here. Ben. ben Kessler, mayor with the city of Bexley. Matt's seen too much of me recently. It's good to see you, Matt. <laughs> yep, I am uh, Matt McPeak, um, just elected um, as city auditor. Um, was inaugurated last night by my kids, which was amazing. Um, but uh, nonetheless, I've been about 23 year finance professional and um, you know, thrilled to be auditor for the city of Bexley and um, certainly interested in learning more about CIC and, and being an active member. Appreciate it. Well, Matt, we're happy to have you. Thanks. Monique Lampke, uh, this is my third year on the CIC. I am the new finance chair of city council and a lawyer by trade. I'm Todd Friedman, uh, found one of the founders here at CIC, been here since the beginning. Um, a lifelong resident of Bexley, born and raised, um, been here my whole life, um, and uh, happy to be here. All right. I'm the uh, Chief Legal Officer for Schottenstein Stores Corporation. Do we have minutes from our last meeting? So we, we do, but I was just trying to pull them up on our system, and I don't know if some our, our our online agenda system is not presenting so right. normally okay. in a couple of different ways so i don't i'm not able to pull them up Can okay else that's have, all right well you know we'll do we'll just at our next we'll one to do yeah we consolidate them, them we can pull them up then we can do that for the record heidi mccabe has joined well hello heidi all right well it's not on the agenda but let's uh one of the things uh, I do want to talk about is um, we, uh, and I think this is something we have not done for, gosh, when was the last time we did a retreat? Was it three or four years ago? Four years. Yeah, four years ago. Um, so we have, uh, and I think hopefully everybody can attend, we have uh, slated January 28th from one o'clock to four o'clock. It's a, it's a Friday um, to do our board retreat. Um, we, uh, and, and Ben came up with this idea. I, I think what we're going to do is hold it at 420 North Cassidy. Uh, we have, well, Ben, if you want to talk about it, kind of what the, what's been going on there and why so, we can use that space. So as you guys know, that's going to be a, in an in interim use as a senior center slash, oh, this is going to sound odd, but also like some teenage programming. So we're still trying to figure out what to name it to merge those two. So if you guys come up with a good name, that's cool. And also somehow relevant. Of course, anything we come up with is cool. It's boomer, boomer, be, boomer. That's been mentioned. That's that's. <laughs> anyway, um, so that space has been carpeted, um, painted, uh, 
you know, some tech is going in there. There's internet and uh, restrooms work last I heard. So it would be, I think, kind of fun to see the space in its interim use and also sit on a site that's slated to be a future mixed use development with the community builders. Um, so that was maybe, maybe a place we could be that would be CIC turf. Yeah, yeah, I think it'll be great. And I think we can, you know, look at the space and, you know, use the space that we're, that we have. And it's better than, you know, trying to either rent space or have to pay for space, something like that. So hopefully. Well, Todd did work into the Orange Theory lease, a clause that we could every year take it over for a six hour period for a retreat. So that's the other option. What do we have to use the treadmills? <laughs> yeah. What do we have to what do we have to do fitness while we're there? Yeah, that's a good point. I think we would. I, I think, think that might not work out for, for everybody. That might be a that might be a problem. Um, Zahi's wife, and I I know your name, but I'm gonna say it wrong. So if you'll introduce yourself, please do it. Hi, I'm Ayala David. Uh for my name, Ayala, like I yell at you. That's how I'm gonna Um I'm an executive coach and I do training in yeah so she is going to be our facilitator which is great and and uh she does this all the time so i think she had a lot of great ideas on how we can structure the meeting uh how we can really come up with some good ideas going forward you know really the goal would be to put together our plan for the next year but then also look out uh for a couple of years i think um we have so, we have some new members of the cic we will have uh, new council members that will be there. I think even for all of us that have been on the CIC, it's good to go back and talk about the history. It's good to talk about the land use plan that we really, you know, have used as the basis and the foundation for what we do. So we're gonna uh, we're gonna do that uh, and go through that. Uh, and then um, it would be my goal at least to go through the different uh, kind of our different areas that we're we're focused on: Ferndale, Mayfield the Cassidy corridor. And then if we get time to talk about the main street corridor and talk about what we want to do, use the land use plan as our basis for that. And then uh, figure out our plans for, for that going forward. So that's really, I think our idea and, and how we're going to, how we're going to put that together. And um, I let you will, you will uh, guide us through that and uh, help us get there and help us keep it, keep organized. So. I'll talk too much that that will be but we don't have uh, we have a lot of members that talk a lot so we don't we don't uh, uh, really fail in that so I think we'll be I think we'll be good um, but that's kind of the plan that's what we really like to do and and uh, everybody there so I think it'll be it'll be good um, next uh, we want to talk about uh, Bexley Square and just um, Really, we want to go through, I sent out a budget earlier today. I don't know if all of you saw it, but we have Ashley and Johanna both here uh, to talk about um, to talk about Bexley Square. Uh, and really, really a couple of things. We need to talk about our budget. Uh, we've talked several times about a roof replacement. So we need to talk about that and, and doing that uh, this year, because I think we're at, a, we're at an urgent point where we really can't just not do it. We've got to uh, figure out our plan and actually do, you know, replace the roof. Uh, next year. And then we have, um, we will have some of our leases, I believe are going to be coming up within the next uh, couple of years. So we need to, we want to talk through that a little bit. Uh, but more than anything, we just wanted to get Ashley and Johanna to give us an update. So uh, Ashley is on the screen. She is uh, graciously joined, uh, agreed to join us via Zoom, although she is, uh, she's not feeling well right now. So um, Ashley, I don't know if you want to talk or you want Johanna to talk or how you want to do that. Um. We can kind of both, if you want to get up by the mic, Johanna, so we can both kind of be involved. I don't want to miss out on it. Oh, she's there you go. Is she there? Nope. She's sitting over in the corner. And oh, okay. you can see her from where you are, but. Okay, perfect. Um, hi, guys. Good evening. I got the dreaded C word, so I am recovering from that and trying to avoid spraying it. Um, so we did put a budget together. Um, I put in kind of, I guess, a wish list. So um, I'm sure there will be a, some adjustments made. Um, the one thing like you had stated is the roof replacement. We had looked at actually doing it last year, but given um, the delay, like all the suppliers are so behind with COVID and everything shutting down. 
So um, I would like to start um, working through exactly which option you guys would like to go with so that we can get the contract signed because I know um, their last I spoke with them, they're running about six months out once they get the signed contracts in. So um, as far as the roof portion, um, I know we I've sent you guys so many different bids and options. I'll kind of get some clean um, proposals sent over to you guys um, for this year, but we're looking at two options. Uh, one is an overlay, and then the other option would be a complete tear off. Um, and speaking with the different contractors, um, I would recommend a complete tear off on this roof. It's just the type of insulation, the fiberglass insulation you have up there has a tendency to hold a lot of water, um, which is going to continue to corrode up there. So unless we just, you know, completely tear it off, we could have more issues. Um, obviously the overlay option is going to be less, but then you have, once they start ripping that up and they find bad decking, you end up sometimes paying more. So, um, with that said, I would um, prefer to do the tear off. Um, the last budget price I got from division seven was 250. And that was based on increased um, supplies and labor um, over just the past couple of years. Um, but I have a total of four proposals. Um, if you want to do the tear off option, it ranges from these different vendors. The low bidder is at 170, and then the high bidder is at 250. So um, I did put the 250 in the budget, um, and obviously we'll work to get that number down. Um, but I just wanted some direction from you guys, I guess, on which option you guys would prefer on that roof. Or, um, I mean, I could even bring over one of my contractors if you want to talk, you know, in detail with him or just send you all the bids um, and explain everything in an email too, but. Um, it was failing pretty comprehensively on this end. We replaced mm -hmm. it before we moved in. So, I mean, at the time, I think it was, we had an inspection report. I think it was 15 or 20 years old. That's yeah, nice. yeah, it's the original roof up there. The overlay? Yeah. You replaced this roof? Yeah. Mm -hmm. What was the other? What was the? What was the condition? The decking, some of it had to be replaced because of, yeah, it was just rust. It wasn't everything though. It was like a couple, it was a little spot replacement. Um, and that's, I, I know that they've been, they, their tenants have continued to have issues. They've just been patching right. it as they can. Yeah. I mean, I, you know, it seems that we're at a point where we probably, it, it, we need to replace it, right? We need to just tear it off and, and do the whole new thing. But I guess the question really is, is that what we want to do? And, and can we afford it? I, I mean, I, I don't know, Heidi, what you think we've, you know, where we are from a budget perspective, what, what revenues we brought in from rents, um, you know, $250,000 is a lot of money. Um, and I think, uh, you know, that, that we had talked, obviously those budgets have gone up because I think when we got our first estimates, they were two, yeah. 75, 200. Yeah. So they've, they've gone up. Um, I think, I mean, that's, that's a, that's a big point too. I don't want to be cheap, but I also, you know, want to, we need to, we need to make sure that we have the money to actually do it. Um, I don't know, Heidi, what are, you, what are your thoughts on the. Um, we have in our Vexus Square account, almost 
Ashley, is that something, I mean, the, the, the tenants, I mean, we talked to them at all about the roof replacement at that, that, that could be, that's a, you know, a, a, a charge that we could run through cam. You know, um, yeah, I haven't specifically taught. I mean, they've been asking for a new roof. I'm sure you guys are aware of that, but, um, typically when we, I can double check the leases, but most of our properties, when we replace the roof, we do run it through cam. Um, yeah, so yeah, we can, sometimes we can use that, you know, do that over a five-year period if it, you know, if it's going to knock up their, you know, their rec, cam rates really high, we can work with them on that. But um, that typically is something we can run through cam. So that's something we would at least pay for it up front and then we could, you know, you'll get rid yeah. of it. Yeah. Yeah. Which makes sense. Yeah. 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 And 250 is like on the high end. I don't think it's going to end up. It was Division Seven, which they were the highest bidder to begin with. Um, and again, that was a budget bid, which is typically higher than normal. I'm hoping we can get in there closer to, um, I would say, 190, 200. I'm hoping around there. So, Actually, what was the pricing on the overlay and not the tear off? So the overlay, um, okay, so the highest bidder on the overlay was 170, and then the low bid came in at 115 for the overlay. 115? Yeah. No matter what you do, whether it's an overlay or a... But I thought one of the vendors had said that it was so compromised underneath that the, that you couldn't do the it. insulation was so wet that it would it would not have it would have yeah, failed. Yeah, we had, we did talk about that yeah. actually. I was um, my one thought is I did hear um, you know some of the roofers were like we did core samples and doing a overlay would be fine, and I heard other roofers telling me because the insulation is so saturated that we can't. Um, I could reach out to one of my reps, like over at Firestone, um, the manufacturing company and maybe meet with him, um, cause they're going to manufacture the roof, you know, whether it be Carlisle or Firestone, um, have him do an inspection and kind of get his opinion too, you know? Yeah, we did. Yeah, Jeff, Jeff Walker did, but I don't know if that ever happened. No, I don't. Did he? I mean, if there, if there's, I mean, I, you know, I think it would, wouldn't be a bad idea to have somebody come and inspect it. Yeah. Of. From the manufacturer. Okay. Yeah. Um, and because my only fear, and I mean, I can. Um, yeah. Let's do that. Let's Tom, why don't we have, if you're okay with it, have your inspector and then whatever that costs, you know, we'll obviously pay that. And then Ashley, why don't you have the, if, okay. if they have the Firestone person come and do that. And then. Okay. Get our inspection done and then come back and we'll make a decision on which way yeah, we Yeah, because once he gets out and inspects, I mean, he can put together a scope that all the bidders are going to have to bid off of, you know. Um, what, I mean, when you look through these bids, there's a lot of, you know, some of them are putting on the metal roof cap, some aren't, you know, so that all of that yeah. to the price. So, yeah, let me do that. I'll get in touch with my Firestone or Carlisle rep, and we can set that up and um, take a look at that. All right, and then Tom will figure um, out. Yeah, so that's, um, anyways, that was what the roof um, budget was for. And then the other things are just, I put in now, oops. Okay, sorry, I clicked another screen. I thought I you. Um, I put in, so the asphalt needs done, but I think that can wait. Um, if we're doing the roof this year, that's another big expense that we probably should have in 2022. But I'm not sure opinion on that. Yeah. Yeah, I thought, uh, we'll have to look. Asphalt, asphalt or concrete, actually, is it? Um, both. So I have... Um, I budgeted, we had a bid 25,000 for the asphalt and then the concrete is um, 
We did. It was just paved two or three years ago. I'm, I'm, where is the asphalt failing? I, didn't, I haven't seen that. Uh, the price, I'll have to look at the bid. I know they were wanting to seal and stripe. Um, let me see here. And then he had some repairs in there. Um, but yeah, I didn't think it really looked like it had to be done right away. So. Yeah. Well, that's probably right. Yeah. So actually, I think what we might want to do, if it's not, if it doesn't put you guys out, is because we do contract out concrete and asphalt as a city, we are able to use that pricing for uh, for the CIC property. So oh, we can okay. have our engineer take a look at it and yeah. it most likely would be favorable pricing. Right. I get to go okay. We split, and then we end up splitting part of that cost because of what you know is between the square and here, right? That's what we end up doing. I think depends where it's at. <laughs> yeah, no, I know, but I think it's not the, it's not half and half, but it's you know there's a part of whatever. We'll we'll figure that out, right? So okay. So just going forward, I guess whenever I need to get collect asphalt proposal, should I just come to you directly for that, or do you still want me to? To your engineer. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, just let me and Nate know, and and I'll work on. Okay. Director. Yep. yep. Okay. Perfect. Okay. So I'll take that out. But um, and then just the other thing was the concrete um in the let's see that price. We now again that was priced out by a subcontractor and we had a bid for fifteen thousand to do the sidewalk repairs. <clears throat> um let's just do Ashley, let's have the city bid both of those, get bids on both of those. Okay. And we'll we'll work with the service director to get that. So We'll talk okay, perfect. To figure that out. Awesome. Um, and then, oh, and then we did uh, talk about the snow removal. Um, I just didn't really know what to base it off of since we don't have like a contract on file. Um, I know the city does the snow. So um, I did take that number down after I spoke to Andy. Yeah, Andy. Yeah. And we have updated pricing that Andy or Grant from the city should be getting you, Ashley, if you haven't heard from okay. them. That'd be great. Yeah. Because we've sort of been undercharging for that. Okay. <laughs> yeah, because I haven't seen any bills, so I'm yeah, that's sure. well, yeah, that's not like <laughs> hey Heidi, your microphone. Sorry. Yeah, I think um, we may need to sit down with the city because I think for insurance we probably owe you something, and there are okay. probably things we need to pay our fair share on. So yeah, um, and also lands like snow and landscaping are the two items that we need to get copies of those. <clears throat> so our, um, just so the, the, the Mark Fischel was the city officer who was appointed this year. It's going to be Beecher Hale, who's the finance director, partially for this, he handles insurance. So we're going to be able to kind of like, the left hand will know the right hand's going. Yep. Ashley, what about the painting? Um, yeah, so I did get a price um, for painting. We would, I was looking at just like the really bad areas. Um, you see a lot of it is in like the back of the building. It's just peeling off. Um, so I didn't quote out painting the entire building this year, just because if we do the roof, I know that would be a lot. So to do the painting, it would be 5,000 back in the back portion where it's the really bad areas that are peeling. We haven't painted the back. Uh, yeah, we were just, I, actually, we might want to hold off. The painting absolutely does have to happen in the rear, like you said, but I think mm -hmm. the roof right. intrusion happening, which is causing that, because it's bubbling. It's not like, yeah. it's not like flaking because of old age. Yeah. It's happening. So, yep. But I think we bit. keep that in the budget and then we, okay. what we need to do. Uh, I don't, we don't need, I don't think we need to approve this budget today, do we, Heidi? I don't think we have in the past. So 
we could bring it back at our next meeting and, and approve it then. Okay. And then we'll have a better idea on those. Yeah, we can clean up those items, Ashley. You know, and, and yeah, and then bring it back to the board at our next meeting. Hey, okay. can you just yep. walk me through the gross rents. Um, I see year to date actual of 178 and the year to date budget of 307 is year to date, but I guess I don't know what's a 2022 budget versus 2021 actual and what's driving the variance. So, yeah, I don't you understand so that. Hannah, can you jump in on that one? Yep. Oh. So this is written as a as a uh, budget January 2022 to December 2022. So it, it doesn't define what that year to date is or right. what the period was. Right. Yeah, it probably won't. Let's see. If I had to guess, I think it's the actual because. So maybe that column could be adjusted. Well, and that, yeah, that would actually make sense because our year to date in the November budget, you, uh, Beck's property report you sent, the income year to date was 152,000, but that's through November, and that's that's low. That's the June one through to November. That's and exactly the period right. to date and period to date budget and actual also don't seem right. to make any sense. Yep. So that's something that could be clarified. Yep. So I think we just need to update that because that doesn't that, that 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 that's not correct. So in conclusion, it is much healthier than this appears to be. Yes. Okay. Thank yes. you. Okay. Well, Thank you. And and I think to Heidi's point. There's in the, in the Bexley Square checking account. There's three hundred seventy-five thousand dollars. So you know, right, right, right. So we're doing okay. <laughs> good, good catch though. That, that was something I was going to ask and I forgot to do it. So, all right, um, uh, Ashley. Any other comments or do we have any other questions for Ashley about the budget? Actually, you had mentioned that maybe some of these other things can be held off if, in fact, the roof is the priority. Out of everything yes. that's put on there about the property, is the roof the absolute top priority? Yes, yeah, definitely. Okay. I'd say, Monique, it's been a priority for at least, I mean, the past six months. Mm -hmm. we've been talking about so, we yeah. actually had talked about doing it last year, but the contract were so backed up you know um we weren't able to get to it so <clears throat> yep. i if if now's an okay time about the solar you know that i've kind of been keeping my eye on that for the roof yep. um which is no surprise to any of you i'm sure but the um so the we worked with a solar designer and the challenge with that center as with many centers is that you can't really share the savings among like you can't easily with a multi-tenant sub metered situation or multi-metered situation make it work mm -hmm. so um the, the uh engine that makes the most sense i think is a solar power purchase agreement so what would essentially we would do is we would work with a developer who would build it and they would we could buy it back if we wanted it to, but it would be no cost to us. They would own, they would own the facility. We would share in any profits, I think to a certain degree. And um, the Columbus partnership is coming up with a green bank that I don't know if you've heard about this, that we would actually be, we're like the perfect type of user for the green bank because we're a nonprofit mm -hmm. that cannot otherwise leverage um, certain types of tax credits that make these work better. So we're talking with them about whether or not this would be a good project. Yeah. They seem interested in it. So it would be like no interest essentially okay. or 1% one, 1 interest. Yeah. When are we going to know more about kind of? About um, I have a meeting in a couple of days about it. Okay. Um, but it's just, it doesn't have to happen at the same time as the roof. I yeah. think having a new roof makes it 
makes it easy, makes a lot it better. more sense. So I think it's just something for us to keep an eye on and I'll continue to keep you guys updated. Okay. And if you hear of anything, do you think makes sense? Good. Let us know. Okay. Um, so moving on from the budget, I think uh, Ashley and Johanna, I think one of the things we want to talk about and we don't want to talk about tonight because I know uh, Michael was supposed to be here and he couldn't, but is, is our leases. So at some point, in the next, maybe at our February or March meeting, we come back and we talk about the leases, what leases are up or what leases are coming up in the next year, two or three, what we need to do, what those escalations and those rents look like, those kind of things. Are they? Okay. Okay. Well, that's good. If you want to discuss, I know um, we had talked about the COVID amendments. There's still some tenants that um, yes. do rent. Um, but there was never amendments created for them, so. I think I think we were going to try to confirm, but this, I feel like a handful still have like a one month deferral that mm -hmm. we never really reconciled. I think there were verbal conversations to mm -hmm. the whole of the remaining lease term. I think it will be landed. Um, but then it never, between the change from Newmark to Gilbert, it never actually got um, uh, put down paper so we can um, reaching out to them and actually getting that final uh, to each tenant. It's not every tenant. Yep. Before that. It's the majority of my thing. Most of them. Yeah. I mean, we can create those amendments once the board decides how they want it to look. So are, are these deferrals from COVID? Is that the things? Mm -hmm. They are. So we um, kind of kept taking the can so that it doesn't. <laughs> and, <laughs> right, as it lasted longer than we had. Uh, and so almost all of we had offered originally, we just called it the two month pause for that April, March, and April of the lockdown. But then we never really uh, decided how we were going, or we never uh, sat down on paper how we were going to. We heard. So from the from my notes, but I did go back to the minutes. Um, it looks like we agree that we just spread that like amortize that over their remaining term. Yep. But uh, I don't think we ever implemented that. So. We never put agreements in place or amendments to those leases to do I that. Yep. So okay. if I recall correctly, also in some of the leases, there is some adjustment for inflation, is that right? In, in Brassica, no? Right. Okay. I, at least I, I remember discussing it. I'm not sure whether it was implemented I think Ben and I at some point talked about it. But yeah, I think we just tied it. Yeah, but I, I'm not sure whether it was implemented. Or not. Yeah. I don't think we did in those leases. No, no, the Brassica was was after, but okay. I know it was discussed. I can't remember how it played out. Okay. Yep. It is, and maybe the only the Pilates studio was different, right? But I think everything else was, I think everything else was the ten percent renting bump that we did. Okay. Uh, anything else about Bexley Square that we want to discuss? I don't know. Ashley, what's the square footage of the, the roof? Um, <clears throat> it is 12,000. Yeah, I don't remember. Twenty thousand square feet. Twenty 
Here, 20 doesn't include the city hall space. Looks like um wow. Thousand. There you go. <laughs> Fourteen thousand. Fourteen. Okay. Oh, 15 with the like patio root portion, I guess. Well, yeah. Yeah. It's real. Four, yeah, five. <laughs> okay. Uh, anything else for Bexley Square for Ashley or Johanna? All right. Um, real sorry. One more. Thing. Um, We're just. We're supposed to be billing back the neighboring tenant for the trash. Um, and I know we had talked about this before getting all the bills together and then the um, seminary pays a percentage of that. The, the trash. The trash, from, yeah, the Rumpke services. Yeah, between the city and the, and the, and the CIC. Mm -hmm. Um, no, with the um, oh, with area on the other side um, where our dumpsters are located. Yep. And then uh, we're supposed to build back um, them a portion of it because they use the dumpsters as well. Well, I don't know that we would since we're not paying that bill. The city is. Right. The city bills us for that, for that dumpster. So the city has to bill back for that. That's right. Okay. Yeah. Yep. But we should at oh. least pay that bill because a portion of it belongs to BCIC. So we need to have that portion of it on their books. Mm -hmm. That's the part we need. <laughs> you're, not getting, you're not getting billed for it. That is correct. Well, no, that we have I gotten mean, billed. Not That's not true. Bill. We've gotten some bills for refuse. We just haven't. They're not. They've been inconsistent from the city. That's yes. Yeah. He's, he's correct. Yep. Because I've gotten them and sent them on to be paid. Yes, I've got, and that's the only ones I have got, the ones you've sent me. <laughs> okay. Anything else I missed, Ashley? Todd? Covers it for me. So I think we need to, we need to approve the budget and then we can send the, then we can send the CAM notices out to them and the CAM uh, requirements out to that. So I think at our next meeting, we approve that and then we send them out, Todd. Mm -hmm. Well, and I don't think we can approve the budget today with, with the changes, right? So I think we have to wait until, and, you know, maybe we can even approve it at our, at that January board retreat. It's one thing we can do. Yeah. That's what I, and that's what I thought, because we had approved, I think, I think two years ago, we approved the budget in March. Yeah. Yeah. So. You know, we don't. We, we obviously, Todd. We don't want to do that for them for budget purposes. But I, you know, I think we should at least try to get it done this month if we can. And if not, we'll do it our first meeting in February. If we can come back at that, if we could, we could even at our January twenty eighth board retreat, we could have a short session, approve the budget, and then move out of that. Now, if I can interject, if you're talking about the triple net reconciliation for the properties, mm -hmm. um, I think. Um, I wanted to ask if there was a template from Newmark, did they give those to you in Excel when they did them so that we can you utilize those without having to recreate the wheel? Okay. Because that'll expedite things right there. Yep. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then Heidi, you and I will get together possibly with perfect balance and try to all be on the same page where you and I'll set something up separate. Okay. Okay. All right. Well, thank you, Ashley and Johanna for coming to the meeting. Thank you. Thank you for having us. It's the big, that's a lot of stuff, but that's you know, <laughs> the biggest property. So it makes sense. All right. Well, Ashley, you don't have to stick around on Zoom if you don't want. You're you're good. All right. Thank Thanks, you. Guys, have a good evening. Thanks, Thanks yeah, Ashley. Thanks, Jonah. Thank you. All right. Um. So next up, we've got the 420 North Cassidy, and uh, Nicole is here again. 
again, she loves coming to these meetings. It's my home away from home. That's right. Uh, just to talk about kind of where we are with the application um, and where we are with the with the LIHTC application with OFA and what we need to do there, uh, what we need to kind of what assistance we need from the CIC, where we stand with the ownership um, of the project, which I think is important. So it's, it's the floor is yours. So I think everybody, I've met most everybody, but for those that don't know me, Nicole Boyer Knight with the Community Builders. I'm a senior project manager and have been working on Bexley Apartments for quite some time. Um, <laughs> But uh, yeah, appreciate the chance to come and just kind of fill you guys in on where we're at. I think the last time I was here was September. September, and, October, I don't yeah. remember which, yeah. And um, at that time, we we were trying to be as um, clear and transparent specifically about what the goals are for the residential financing for the Bexley apartment project and specifically about the ownership structure. Um, to refresh everybody's memory, Last February, so February of 2021, this year's 22, Nate said he's putting 23 on things. I'm still putting 21 on things. So um, last year, February 2021, we submitted an application for the residential funding source, and it was a co-application with the community builders, TCB, and the CIC. Um, we were not successful in that funding application, and part of the reason was because while the CIC is a 501c3 entity and is a not-for-profit in the eyes of the IRS is also a quasi-governmental entity and so it was deemed not fully eligible as a nonprofit in the eyes of the funding agency and so we lost 10 very competitive points in our application so the pivot that we're making for this year is that we are um, completely removing the CIC from the ownership participation in the residential financing structure so there is no CIC participation whatsoever in the ownership of the residential portion. Um, the community builders, we are sole developer of the residential portion. And then um, we are the managing member of the general partner. Um, we are in the process of working with a local partner to get another nonprofit on board to get those 10 points that we lost last year. But um, as of right now, I'm not at uh, liberty to say who it is because we haven't finalized that agreement. But so from a, yeah. Yeah. So, so you're going to, so we're going to buy it for the or we're going to split it down, or is there a lot split, we're going to condo it, how will we not? Yeah. So what we, the way we have structured the project last year, um, specifically on the 420 site, was that um, we were going to execute a land lease with the CIC. So we still want to do that. We still would like to condominiumize the commercial space from the residential space. And so the commercial ownership will be solely the, the CIC. So, or whatever entity you guys determine to be the appropriate the CIC. one. CIC, it'll still be the CIC. Okay, so the CIC will own the commercial and then the residential portion will be owned by the community builders and this other partner that we have. So we will, we are looking to keep the same land control and site control. It's the same condominium, condominiumized structure. It's just that the CIC does not have a material participation in the ownership structure anymore of that residential portion. But because we are going to be neighbors, <laughs> more or less, um, there's still co-tenancy and other things that, yes. Yes. Yeah. So it's uh, so it, break, it breaks it out. So we, you know, because we lost those points, um, we kind of as a as a as an executive committee talked about it. And it, you know, it, it makes sense for us not to be involved in that ownership. Now, our ownership was very limited, if you all remember, it wasn't we were making money off of it. And it was it was, you know, less than one percent. Um, so this just takes us out of that, that structure for, really for the low income housing tax credit application more yes. than anything. Yeah, that's exactly right. So what, what TCB has been doing since, you know, since we kind of found out last summer what happened is trying to find another partner to, to do the project with, but that our structure, as far as how we're going to, you know, we're going to still continue on the land. We will, as 
Nicole said we're going to do the uh, condominium, the, the the commercial. We'll still do all that, and we'll have to figure all that and what that means. Uh, but you know, we're just not in the application for it. So, so why why do we need another non for profit? Really? Because there's still the competitive scoring requirement for so local for partners, and so um, there are a couple entities that we've been talking with, and we're hoping to have somebody finalized by next so week. So these entities are like. They're, they're local nonprofits with that are have a presence currently in Bexley or in um, the adjacent but, communities. But what's their goal? or? Um, so the criteria that the Ohio Housing Finance Agency has is that they have to have a history of providing housing. Um, and so it a, takes a narrow pool and okay. makes it even more <laughs> complicated to uh, really find the right partners that also have a really good mission. And so, you know, for us, it's all about finding a partner that also understands the goals and the mission and some of the yeah. nuances. Yeah, we didn't, that. you know, we're a nonprofit, but we didn't meet the mission of housing. So that no, really, it was the quasi-governmental. Like, oh, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. SCB is also a non-for-profit, right? So what's, is it like the... It's because we do not have housing. In in yeah. Ohio or in Bexley? Well, in, in, in Franklin County and in Bexley. Oh, yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yep. We're talking with local groups. <laughs> We've got a list. <laughs> okay, what's the expected timeline, say, for the next three or six months? Yeah, so our funding application is due February 10th, and OFA will make their funding decisions on May 18th. So we will know if we have a go no go on May 18th. Um, I will share in full transparency TCB, we have a uh, purchase option on the 2300 East Livingston site that is a hard option. So that May date is really important for us as it is for the CIC in the city around the affordable housing initiative. Um, hopefully we are successful in getting awarded this year. And if that is the case, then we would seek to close on our financing in like May or June-ish of 2023. It really just kind of depends on um, how some of the gap financing resources come together. And then we're projecting about a 15 month construction schedule but with everything being the way it is right now, throw a dart at the wall and, and see where it lands. Right. So, but we're hoping that the project will be finished and open by 2024, by late 2024. So at this point, we don't really, Nicole, you don't need anything from this board at this point, right? I think we're, well, that's not true. We mm -hmm. have to have a, we have to have a development agreement, correct? We would like to ask to um, execute the land lease. So we had an option to lease that we executed last year and we'd like to ask to re-execute that because it expired when the tax credit award was not funded. Right, yep, that's true. And then um, we would also like to um, execute an updated developer agreement that fully outlines the separation of the CIC from the residential piece because the one we have currently still has that structure. Has, it, has, it been, has us in the structure, yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, any other questions for Nicole? Do you have a draft of that modified development agreement or is that something that you want? We have it and I can okay. send, okay. yeah, I'll send it as a follow-up, yep. yeah. Because I think what we would need here is, you know, the ability to, for uh, for me as the chair to sign that, that development agreement and land lease. Now we can bring it back for everybody to review but that's probably what we need is that ability to do that. And the land lease would be effective at a future date, conditional upon Correct. financing on it. Yeah, and the language in the land lease is, will be identical to what it was last year. There'll be no changes. So I'll send both of those documents as a follow-up to everybody tomorrow. Right. Yes, yes, we have not changed anything in the projects. The only change, and I think this was because it happened in February around the zoning is that, the commercial space right now is 2,500 square feet on 420 North Cassidy. We had hoped to be at 3,500, but because of parking requirements and just looking at the density of the parking for our commercial use, um, we took it down to 2,500 square feet. Yeah, that got changed, Dave, in the in the uh, in the zoning discussions. Day that was of. something we came back with and said, let's reduce it because that reduces the parking of the the need for the parking because you know it's very tight and there's there's on-street parking that has to happen and some other things so that's why we and the space design was wonky there was yeah. like a key, it was goofy yeah you know, there was a box and a key and so we just said we'll take the key as residential storage space or some sort of amenity space for our residents right yeah bike storage bike storage 
thousand square feet for bike store. That's great. It's a lot of bikes. Yeah. <laughs> Probably have ten bikes each. <laughs> ten to whatever. Yeah, whatever. Whatever. Okay. Well, thank you. And yeah. uh, I think you're good as far as questions. Okay. I'll stick around in case anybody has any. Okay. So I think we pre we need a resolution, right, to do that this evening, I believe, so that they can have it in their application. Every to do a development agreement. Application. I think we need two things. We need a we need a uh, authorized, uh, basically for me as the chair to sign a development agreement, a new development agreement, a developer agreement is basically our developer of choice is TCB. And then the second thing would be for me to sign a land lease, uh, you know, a ground lease between us and TCB for the 420 North Cassidy. The most time sensitive one for us would be the land lease that we need to have for our application that is due by four o'clock on Thursday, February 10th. So our next meeting is February 1st. Would it maybe be better to take a look at it? I won't out? be here February 1st, but if you all want to vote on that February 1st, that's fine by me. Yes, Todd. Um, does anybody re-rack the numbers from 2,500 square feet to possibility versus the rest we're going to get? And we want to also re-rack the numbers to see what we're going to call it. We have not, Todd. We haven't looked at that. Uh, yeah. So we have some of that. Like, we've done some rough numbers. I'm actually getting construction numbers back right now, and it gives me heartburn. Um, but, yeah, I'm happy to send our assumptions over and, and give the real-time feedback that we're getting from um, our contractors around just yep. TI build out. And part of it also is um, assumptions around what the end user might be in the space. We're looking to do, you know, grease traps and hood connections and everything, assuming that a restaurant could go in there and making sure that there's infrastructure. So yeah, I'm happy to send the information when we get it. I'll have it in probably two weeks. Well, so let's do that. So let's wait. So in our February 1st meeting, we'll, we will vote on those two things for you to get that. Okay. Looking forward to coming back. Thank you. Thanks. You may not have to be here for that meeting. <laughs> yeah. yeah. She doesn't leave anything a chance. No, she doesn't. She's, <laughs> she's good. She's good. All right. Thanks, Nicole. Um, let's see. Moving on. Do you want to talk about Ferno Mayfield? Uh, you know, I, I think we should probably delve into Fernando Mayfield in depth more at the retreat, yep. but I will say that uh, we've been working, the city council passed some nuisance language that we've started working around with the properties at Fernando Mayfield. Um, a state of Ohio has opened up brownfield funds. That's a very new and recent development, which can apply to that site. Yep. Um, city council approved um, an infrastructure fund and funded that infrastructure fund. And it includes is eligible use of those funds, environmental remediation and uh, right of way improvements and such. So there are a couple of projects that we have anticipated for that, but Fernell Mayfield is one of them. So um, all that, I think, I just want you to know that there's stuff moving that requires, I think that's a good retreat topic to kind of delve into a little deeper. I agree. All right. Uh, Heidi, do you have a finance report? Probably not. Yeah, I have a all right. So I updated you that our Mexican Square account has uh, 374000 to 1454 We also um, have our Ferndale Mayfield account, which is $377,452 is in there currently. We have our Cassidy account, that's for the 458 property, that's at $5,432. And our general account, there's also 5,270 in there. Um, and I don't think we've updated the full board that we did um, finalize the audit with the state. That's for calendar year 19 and 20. Um, and it was a long and in-depth process. There were a couple of things that we, and the report you can find online, there are a couple of material weaknesses that they found where um, they've now been corrected through perfect balance and really through one was a first half property tax that was booked in the wrong year. And so they had to, because of the amount of that, it uh, tripped the material weakness. And another one was, a uh, we have several payments that both come in and go out, 
and it was just marked as a journal mm -hmm. entry and not as an actual income That's and expense. It. So it doesn't make a difference from a cash flow point of view, but we had to rebook it in the way that they wanted us to. So that was it. All right. That audit was awesome. <laughs> Awesome. It was awesome. And we got to do another one this year. Okay. But and we now get to do them annually. Yes. Because we're a component unit of and we're going annual. The city. Yeah. Year Great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. But next year though, Heidi, one of the good news, one of the good things is that and you weren't on this call because I, I think I, no, I missed the, you missed high, it. Yeah. High point. <laughs> yes, but we will have a we won't have the state auditor auditing us. It will be an accounting firm that contracts with the state auditor. Oh. Yeah. So and it could be Julian and Group. It could be another you know one of the other firms. So I actually think that's a not so to disparage do. our and we're going to get our finance state auditor pulled up to be able to be the conduit. Right. But well, David was painful. We do just so I mean, we do the annual review through yeah. Julian and Group. It was just that this is the state process. That's right. a whole new, new level. Yes. So yeah. So we'll start that process here, right. here soon. Right. All right. Uh, that's all I Thanks, Heidi. Do we have any uh, new business or old business? Any public comments for our public? Okay. All right, with that, I'm going to ask for a motion to adjourn into executive session per, is this the Ohio Revised Code section 22 point? Per city section 22.3, I'm sorry, 223.03, .03, subsection B, to consider the purchase of property for public purposes or for the sale of property at competitive bidding. If premature disclosure of information would give an unfair competitive or bargaining advantage to public interest. So I, do I have a motion to adjourn the adjourn, or a motion by uh, Tom Brignan, seconded by Todd Friedman. So uh, we have to do roll call to do that. So Zahi. Zahi. Dave. Dave Gold, yes. Tom. Heidi McCabe, yes. Sarah Gold, yes. Nate Green, yes. Ben Kessler, yes. Matt McPeak, yes. Monique Lampke, yes. Freedman, yes. All right. Thank you all. And Mr. Chair, I believe it's our intent to adjourn totally as soon as we come out of executive session. Is that correct? It is our intent to adjourn once we come out of executive session. Thank you all. Thanks, Cole.
Okay. For the record, All the motion. Yep. All right. All right. Do I have a motion that uh, we're back from executive session? I move to adjourn the meeting. Second. All right. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you all.